Hello and welcome to another Britsend podcast with me, Sam. And me, Tom. So, Tom, how are you doing this lovely morning in London? I'm, all things considered, I'm actually very well. Thanks, Sam. How are you? Yeah, I'm not bad, thank you. As you know, I've moved into my new flat. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Yeah, so we moved in on Saturday. Spent a lot of time moving things around, unpacking clothes, organising stuff. So that was a fun weekend. Fun, fun, fun. uh, (laughs) Yeah, no, it's, it's been okay. Today, we're going to be talking about housing and specifically housing in London. Tom, what first comes to your mind when I say housing in London? The first thing that comes to my mind is the word expensive for a number of reasons. Housing in London is extremely expensive and it's only getting more expensive as the years goes on. That's both for buying housing and renting housing. So yes, the first thing that comes to my mind is how difficult it is to find affordable housing in London. What comes to your mind, Sam? To be honest, exactly the same word. (laughs) Expensive, (laughs) could I say pricey, extortionate, maybe. Yeah, any words which express that it just costs a lot of money to live in London and to buy a house in London, but also even to rent a house or a flat in London. How long do you think it takes someone on an average salary to buy a one-bedroom flat in London, Tom, how long do you think it would take them to work and save up the money? It's hard to say. It's, I mean, it's, it's possible now that it might be impossible for someone on just an average salary, unless it's, unless we're thinking of decades, many, many years, unless there's some extremely fortunate event where for some reason, a very cheap house or a very cheap one room studio flat becomes available and someone happens to have, you know, savings or a relative hand the money or some special circumstance. It's extremely difficult to make enough money to buy a house now in London, in any part of London, as more and more areas become gentrified, which means when an area is supposedly improved meaning it receives lots of investment, which makes it more appealing to people who have money, who have more money. So more wealthy people move into an area and the price of everything goes up, basically. What do you think, Sam? I agree. Yeah, I think it can take an impossibly long amount of time to save up money to buy a flat, even a small flat. A lot of people, if they're, if they're lucky, they have assistance from family, their parents, or if they obviously earn a lot of money, then they can save up much more easily. However, for lots of people, they have to look for other options. So I mean, the option which most people choose, especially when they first move to London, is to rent a flat or a house. It's very common to rent a house or a flat with friends or just with other people who we call flatmates. Tom, when was the last time you lived with flatmates? I lived with flatmates about a year and a half ago, but I wasn't in London. I was in another very expensive area of the UK called Brighton, and I was living with flatmates while doing a master's degree. Since I moved back to London, I've been living with my parents, which is becoming more and more common for people in their 20s and even in their in their 30s in the UK. So Yeah, I lived with flatmates in Brighton and I live with my parents in London, but I am intending to move out after this lockdown period is over. How about you, Sam? How has the transition been from moving from your last home to your current home? I have been living with three friends for the past nearly five years now. But like I said at the start, I moved on Saturday to a new flat with uh, my fiance. It's been, yeah, a big transition, big change, obviously. There is something very fun about living with friends because you can spend time with each other and make jokes and and have a few drinks, things like that. But uh, the downside of it is, of course, that if you're in a flat, then the space is limited. I lived with three other friends, but in a very small apartment or flat. I had a very small room And so the kitchen area was the only area we could all spend time together, really. It can get a bit claustrophobic. You feel like you are in a very small space without much room, and it makes you uncomfortable. When I moved into the flat on Saturday, the first thing 
that was fantastic, of course, was moving in with my fiance, but also just having space, basically having a living room, having a, a kitchen to ourselves was, yeah, a big change, especially after about five years. Yeah, it's it's been a big change. I think I'll miss sort of making jokes with friends, but at the same time, I'll enjoy having the space and being with my fiance. Like we were saying, London is really expensive to live in, even to rent a property in. However, people still come here and come to live here and work here. Even though most people in the UK know how expensive it is to live in London, people still move here. Why do you think so many people want to live in London? I think there are several reasons. The first one that comes to my mind is there, despite the competition for jobs, there are still a huge number of employment opportunities for people uh, if they come to London. The other thing is that the average wage in London is relatively higher than in other parts of the UK. So people who can work in London have the option of maybe living outside of London in what we might call a commuter town and living quite comfortably commuting into London to work and then going back home in the evenings. So that's one reason. Another reason is the cultural and social activities available in London, which are very attractive to people. There's so much to do in London. So I think that draws a lot of people into London. So those would be the two key reasons that come to mind. One thing that is definitely not the reason is that people come to London because there's so much affordable, available housing. That is simply not the case. So I don't think anyone coming into London is coming because they think, yeah, I can buy, I'm going to be able to get a lovely flat in the center of London. No, you're not. The only people who are doing that are extremely wealthy businessmen and women from other parts of the world, particularly places like Saudi Arabia and Russia at the moment. And China, I think, is also growing in amount of investment into what we call luxury flats or luxury apartments in the center of London, which are bought by very wealthy people who don't necessarily actually live in them or spend much time in them but use them as a kind of means of making more money by selling them off or renting them off, which has become a, rather a problem in our housing market. So now we come to the word of the podcast. And we've talked a lot today about uh, housing. And one word we used was the word gentrify. So gentrify is a verb which means to change a place or a location, such as a neighbourhood, by making it more appealing to people who have money. So that can mean improving it or changing it in ways that people with money like. And it means that they therefore want to move there. So, Tom, generally, do areas that have a lot of rich people living there already become gentrified? Do we gentrify those places? Or do we gentrify older or poorer areas usually? We usually gentrify older and poorer areas. Exactly. Now it's time for the comment section of the podcast. And the comment we have chosen for this week is from Nam Jong Ul, who says... I'm really happy I've stumbled upon this video, which really helps me to listen to English and learn English, especially whenever I go jogging. It's wonderful to listen. And we might say it's wonderful to listen to, to be perfectly correct. And then they go on to say, so I have to say thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comment. And I think it's a great idea to listen to a podcast while jogging. And you can do two things simultaneously getting fit while learning English. So I think that's a lovely idea. Thank you very much for your comment, Nam Jong Ul. And again, thank you to everyone for all of their comments on our podcast. That's fantastic. Yeah, really nice. And as you know, I'm a big fan of jogging. So I, I thoroughly approve of, uh, of that use of the podcast. So as you might have noticed today, we have a shorter podcast. And that is for a very good reason. It's because we're trying to make our podcasts more efficient, make them a little bit shorter, a little bit more concise, so that we can put out more podcasts for you. Because it actually takes quite a long time just to organise and check the podcasts. So 
We're doing shorter ones so that we can put more out for you. So I hope uh, you've enjoyed listening to us talking about housing and the issues around housing in London and how expensive it is. And hope you have a fantastic week and stay safe with the situation in the world at the moment. Things are getting better, I think, in some places, but we still want to make sure you're not getting sick. So uh, stay safe and have a great week and we will speak to you soon. Take care, everyone. Speak to you soon. (music) 